Welcome back to Kushtaka Garage, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am, because today I'm installing a cold air intake on a 2000 Chevy Silverado 2500. This one should be pretty fun. Here's the truck that we are installing it on. Been working on this truck for a little bit. Besides the, uh, the visual mods that you see, this performance-wise is 100% stock. And the only thing that I have done to it is uh, this brush guard is pretty rusty. Uh, you would have seen that on the last episode, but I cleaned that up uh, when I installed this nice new sweet grill. And then also earlier this summer, I uh, welded up the rear frame. Put two new cross members, a bunch of plates on there, and essentially just saved this truck from going to the dump, which is where I was going to go. But now it runs fantastic. Here is our kit. Picked this up on Amazon for a pretty decent price. Looks like it has everything that we need, and I kind of laid it out roughly how it's going to go. So that goes into there. Uh, our MAF sensor should go over that. This will connect to those two. There's a clamp. Some screws for our box. This will screw into each other like that. And then we'll put our uh, little bumper stop things right there. Uh, clamps there, main tube, and then this is the 90 that goes into the throttle body. So super, super simple stuff. Uh, I think I'll start by putting that together real quick, and then I'll get back to you over here. This should be pretty easy too. So here is the clamp that we got to remove to pull it from the throttle body. And then uh, I'll remove this clamp to pull that out. And then this is probably bolted down somehow. Yeah. Got one bolt here. Let's see if I can get a light. Actually, that's just clipped in. That's not even a bolt. So that's fun. One there. There's probably one on the other side, maybe. Maybe not. We get an easy one today. I like that. Okay. <clears throat> Got her mostly put together here, and I just wanted to show you orientation of things, how it looks, and specifically draw your attention to the rubber uh, stopper. So you have some adjustments you can do. The instructions say to put it in the midway. Uh, you can feel it out for yourself, but I had to put it up a little bit further uh, so that it touches. And that's just a little vibration dampener stopper thing. Anyways. Came with all the hardware, that looks good. Uh, the orientation of this guy is that the little hump, the angle, needs to go facing up, and then this will face your throttle body. Okay, ready to uh, take that old one off now and uh, finish assembly. Resonator, some sort to quiet it down. Oh, yeah. pops right out. Nice. Okay. Looks like this does just pop right out. I like that. But I think we are gonna have to reuse the plate on the bottom. Move these guys. Okay, let's get you a better angle here. All right, now I'm looking at it, it looks like everything needs to come out because on this side here, the new box 
the lip is going to tuck under. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Not the greatest fit. Okay, right there. Let's see if I can make that work. <sighs> hmm. I like the way that fits. One second. Okay, I mean, this isn't really a good fit, uh, but looks like I can thread it at least a little bit. Luckily, it's pretty bendy, so you know, if I can just get this guy in. Very pliable. Okay. Does fit on top, not under, but everything fits on top. Okay, took the liberty of putting the uh, map sensor on. Real easy, pops off. You reuse this boot for the map, map, and uh, put that on. And uh, all we got to do now is cinch up this rear end. Good to go. I kept everything fairly loose so I can kind of move things around a bit. This is this rear end. Missed one. Okay, battery died on me, but I wanted to show you this one thing here first. So this 90 has a long end and a short end. Long end goes towards the front, short end is what's going to connect to this. It fits a lot better. Okay, so grab this guy. Grease there. Plug back in this MAF sensor. Bob's your uncle. Let's see if she starts up.
Okay, and that's how you do the install. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna give the uh, Fitment 6.7 out of 10, uh, only because that box didn't really fit all that well, but it did It did uh, ultimately work. As you see, and everything else fit really nice. Uh, quality, I'm gonna give that a, uh, let's give it an 8.2. It is does feel really solid and really nice. Uh, the boots, I think, could be a little bit higher quality, but the rubber boots, they look like they held, they sound like they're holding, so they are good enough. Uh, the price, I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10. I think, uh, yeah, you really can't beat that price. Um, and now I'm working on this LQ460, which is the uh, iron block version of the LS, the really, uh, you know, since 2000. The parts are a lot cheaper than working on an LB7 Duramax. The air intake on my LB7 five years ago when I bought it was 295. That same air box is going for 400. And it's basically the same setup as this. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. And this was a third of the price. Uh, so I'm gonna put a link in the description. And uh, next, we are going to go take this for a test run. Uh, use our little MTX thing and see if we got any improved anything and uh, just see what it do and then I'll give you my impressions of uh, sound if there's any seat of the pants if I got any actual numbers uh, that says it did anything uh, it already sounds a little bit cooler but we're gonna see what it sounds like open throttle I'll, I'll let you know because I'm not sure how much the camera's gonna pick up uh, but otherwise uh, ease of installment was pretty easy uh, anybody can do this job you guys can do it anybody can do it uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next segment of the video, but first, check out the store below. You're going to see 4th Wall Kushikaw Garage, and you're going to see a bunch of shirts like this. This is a sweet, sweet shirt, t-shirts. They're made for uh, us Huskier guys. About 220 pounds. 5'11", and uh, fits great. Makes you, uh, fits nice and tight around the chest and arms, but it's a little loose in the belly. And uh, super soft cotton, and I got the shorter t-shirt version, so it really makes your arms pop. <clears throat> and also, made sure to pick a nice sweatshirt too, so the LB7 sweatshirt. It says Kushtaka Garage on the side. Got all sor sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. This is super soft, also fits as bigger guys nice. And got an LB7 hats. Kushtaka Garage hats, all kinds of hats, styles, colors, everything, mugs, you name it. Uh, it supports the channel, helps me buy more parts and shit that I can throw in these trucks and install for you. Uh, would appreciate that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and move on to the next part. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a baseline for this truck, see what the horsepower and torque rating is. I'm using a... Uh, OBD Link MX Plus. Uh, you can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, they're pretty sweet. I've owned it for about a year now. I haven't done a review on it or anything, but I use it pretty extensively and I've used it on a variety of trucks. Dodge, Ford, Chevy, GMC. And uh, primarily I got it so I could read uh, DTC codes, ABS codes, transmission codes, but also like reads like your seat belt and engine cluster codes. And you can download additional codes uh, on the net to get a really thorough diagnostic because it, it has access to every one of your sensors and it makes use of it. Other cool features that it has uh, is that it has a cool dashboard and you can 100% customize this. Uh, this one's pretty basic, but I added the engine torque and engine power, and this is gonna be at the crank, of course, because uh, as you see, we're not moving, but we're creating about 6.3 horsepower, 57, 58 pounds of torque. It reads your RPMs, your math, a variety of other things. It even can calculate your, if you have a turbo, it'll calculate your PSI. And uh, I don't know, some of you might think that's bunch of malarkey but uh, I've tested this on my LB7 Duramax and I have an actual analog gauge in there and uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio the uh, calculations of this unit match a real-world analog gauge so that was pretty cool uh, I've tested the horsepower and torque on a number of stock vehicles and uh, Every time so far, I mean, they're, they're pretty well-maintained vehicles, but every time so far they 
uh, hit right within spec of what was advertised at the crank. Um, I also, the fans of the channel know that Big is you know, a pretty highly modified uh, vehicle, the 45 over injectors, I ported the heads, rebuilt the turbo, ported the turbo, upgraded the compressor wheel, intake, uh, I ported a lot of things, uh, cold air intake, turbo horn, free flowing exhaust, tune, blah blah blah, all the fun stuff that you, you get when you have a Duramax, it has a camp router of course, which doesn't help the horsepower out, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that came in at a little over 600 pounds, or 600 uh, horsepower and a little over 1200 pounds of torque, and if you factor in, well you gotta re reduce that by 26% roughly to get your power to the wheels and that'll give you you know a pretty close guesstimation of what you're at which puts puts pig at in tow haul mode at about 450 horsepower which is about right because when i romp on it between fourth and fifth gear i will slip the clutch but otherwise it's all right so that's kind of the sweet spot for that truck as long as i you know stay off the skinny pedal which i do most of the time uh, except when i'm testing it out so you know, with relative confidence, I think uh, this is going to be pretty close, and I'm curious to see if this 23-year-old truck uh, can still put out what it was advertised. And we'll see what it can actually do. Uh, I haven't made any modifications to this truck yet. Um, the only thing I've done is change the oil and put new plugs and wires on it. Um, but otherwise, this truck has just been extremely well maintained in stock. So let's go ahead get on the road and take a couple of rip skis. Oh, another cool thing that this thing can do is a, uh, it'll do a zero to 60 or a quarter mile. And uh, the nice thing about it is it doesn't start until you hit the accelerator, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that today. Um, just cause of where I'm gonna be driving at, but I can at least get us uh, some good readings here. Uh, better if you can like stop somewhere there's no traffic and you gotta get straight away and but I'm gonna be driving uh, the valley here it's midday I'm on my lunch break so there shouldn't be too many people on the road it's been raining a little bit so we'll see how much we get on it but otherwise uh, I'll see you on the road we are gonna be at a dead stop but I gotta make a turn and then start going and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be stopped in the middle of the road and try to do all this, so we'll just keep doing what we're doing right now. around 263 300 pounds of torque looks like the torque wanted to keep climbing if I kept going so maybe on my final pass I'll go for a longer stretch uh, yeah obvious restrictions in this truck are it's stock we'll see if the cold air intake does anything I'm not expecting anything astronomical of course it's just a cold air intake but uh, it'll definitely appreciate the upgraded filter and I don't know how dirty that old filter is um, also there's an obvious restriction in the exhaust uh, this was taken to a muffler shop probably 15 years ago they threw on a stock muffler from a newer Chevy but it had smaller pipe diameter uh, the stock 2000 Chevy Silverado 2500 has dual stock three inch and it looks like it's piped down to two and a half and then goes up to the three and a half exit uh, so a little bit of restriction there plus all the other things we know about tuning of course it's super restrictive and uh, I'm gonna get my get EFI live on my Duramax and you can get EFI live on these guys too so once I have the unit I'll order up uh, some tunes for this guy and see what it do and uh, take you along for the ride but it looks like 263 is gonna be our starting point 
All right, it's the next date. We're about to do the road test and cold air intake. And I've been driving around a little bit, just uh, running errands and stuff, and it made a bigger difference than I thought it would. Uh, that old air intake is extremely restrictive. All kinds of bends and pinches and stuff. Whereas the new air intake is just a straight chop, little bend. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, Let's see if I can duplicate the results that I was tested on last night, but I can tell you right now throttle response is there uh, The transmission even acts different. It's not so sluggish. It holds on to a gear for higher RPMs before changing gears So obviously better for performance. Uh, I seen a horsepower gain in just my uh, With my MTG thing that I use More than I thought I was going to gain and uh, the overall feel is a lot better so if you're rocking an OEM air intake and it's an otherwise stock vehicle it's 100% worth the effort super inexpensive part uh, really easy to change and for that price you get some massive gains on the grand scheme of thing it's not a huge huge amount but for the price and effort it's pretty big gains it would be the first uh, mod that I do on my my Silverado if I were you followed by you know, tune and free-flowing exhaust, of course. Uh, but I'm gonna go drive out to the spot that we went for our other tests so that we get uh, as close as results as we can. It's still wet and rainy and everything, so we should be uh, should have the same conditions. So I'm gonna head out there and uh, be back with you. Okay, approaching our takeoff spot here. We're gonna go right kind of go up to this loop here okay this is a uh, purely academic but I just want to point out that as I'm sitting here idling uh, yesterday that would idle at 6.3 horsepower now it's idling at 7.4 7.5 that's pretty interesting okay here we go enough one for me I like that I'll take that so uh, cool that's up from 263 so that's 19 horsepower almost 20 horsepower uh, yeah I guess those stalkers are pretty restrictive okay I'm gonna keep driving and I'll talk to you in a bit okay I think that pretty much settles that uh, after reviewing the footage it looks like the highest number I got for horsepower was uh, 283 and yesterday I think we were seeing 263 so we're thereabouts of 20 horsepower gain with just a uh, air intake which is fantastic and you know I've already gave you a disclosure but we'll give you another disclosure in case you skipped ahead and you didn't get it the first time uh, I'm using the OBD link MX plus uh, which links up to your phone or an iPad or whatever and it calculates this all of its parameters and everything based off every sensor that it uses and I imagine it's very much like those uh, programs uh, online or that you can download or buy punch in you know what cam you got what air intake what blah 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 engine specs and it'll give you your guesstimated horsepower and torque um, you know they're pretty close pretty accurate not always spot on but you know it gives you a reference point especially you know it's great if you're on a budget or if you're like where I am where if I want to get to a dyno I gotta pay uh, thousands of dollars worth of ferry tickets cross the border into Canada then back into Alaska spend you know a week of my time plus fuel and shit and it's just you know maybe maybe one of these days would be fun to do it just for fun but I ain't got that time right now and I just wanna you know see what a cold air intake does and that spending a few thousand dollars in a week to get a dyno test for you know a $70 part just doesn't make sense to me doesn't make sense to you either I imagine so uh, yeah I think the sensors that it does use is it uses the wheel speed sensor of course uses your math uses your air uh, to fuel ratio uses your cam 
uh, position sensor and uh, probably a variety of other things uh, it takes in consideration your gear ratio and uh, injector so I don't know there's a lot of parameters I'm sure I'm not even not even thinking about uh, but so far it seems pretty accurate uh, I've tested this on a f number of trucks and a uh, number of stock trucks and the numbers have always come up pretty close uh, or within spec of what is advertised uh, by the manufacturer of power at the crank. And of course, you're going to produce significantly less power uh, by the time that gets to your wheels because you have your transmission to take in consideration, your drive line, your axle, your tires, tire size, and all of that stuff plays a role in what you actually get. But if you subtract about 26% of that crank number, then you should get an approximation you know so it's not an exact science but it does give us a baseline and a before and after and something to look at something to think about and one thing that uh i definitely have thought about since i pulled that old air intake off so i didn't realize like how ugly and restrictive that thing was but you know when the manufacturers design it they design these things for a specific horsepower range and they take the tuning in consideration they take the clientele in consideration and one thing that a majority of people like are uh vehicles that have good road manners and that are quiet and this truck is pretty quiet and uh it's just a little bit louder with that air intake on there. It does sound a little throatier, a little meaner, a little more like it should. And uh, I, I did like that. The throttle response is great. I did absolutely notice the power right off the bat. Uh, it wants to peel out, screech the tires now. Uh, the horsepower overall and torque numbers are pretty low. And I think it's probably around what the manufacturer uh, put out for an LQ4, a 2000 LQ4. Uh, which leaves a lot on the table and they leave a lot on the table with their tuning which is why eventually this thing will get an EFI live after I get the all the hardware and software and stuff and I get my LB7 set up first that's the priority because it's got a lot of mods on it and it needs it um, but you can also get an EFI live tune for these trucks so might as well do it and uh, just a tune a nice tune on a stock truck uh, will get you about 70 horsepower alone. That's just how much the manufacturer leaves on the table uh, when they tune these things uh, for stock. Uh, of course, that's the, the top end, and you're going to sacrifice bottom end, and, and they don't want to do that from the manufacturer because these things are work trucks, you know. And I don't think, uh, when I get this tune, I don't think I'm going to go full 70 horsepower. I want, you know, nice drivability. I want the bottom end torque. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you know I do a lot of overlanding and, and things and a lot of daily driving and uh, this truck's a tow haul um, So You know, we gotta we gotta keep that in mind when we build our vehicles can't just throw the biggest parts at everything because then you'll have a Horribly driving street vehicle that can't tow for shit. So, you know pay attention to your parts, I guess anywho uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend uh, far exceeded my expectations as far as the overall performance um, probably order a sock for the uh, actual filter just to provide that extra protection from bugs and pine needles and hemlock needles and sticks and shit uh, but I am extremely happy with that extremely surprised at that and just the seat of the pants feel alone 100% worth that 70 bucks my friend uh, alright well that's it I'm on my lunch break, so I gotta get back to work. Hope it helped you. Hope you found it entertaining. I had a lot of fun recording it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.